Hello, hi everyone. And the topic for today's lecture is direct retainers, indirect retainers, and tooth replacement in cast partial dental. Now these are the learning outcomes uh, from the lecture. So please make note of that. Uh, placed on the abutment tooth for the purpose of holding a removal partial denture. Here in removal partial denture, abutment tooth is a tooth on which the clasp assembly is placed. Okay, the tooth which is just adjacent to the edentious area. So this is a clasp assembly, and these are the various components of a clasp assembly, which is basically a direct retainer. So first is the retentive terminal. You can see this pointy tip. Uh, this is the retentive terminal, and then we have this is whole part is known as the retentive clasp arm. Then we have the reciprocal clasp arm. We have the occlusal rest. We have the shoulder. The shaded area is called as the shoulder, and this is the body. And the seventh is the minor connector, which attaches the direct retainer assembly or the clasp assembly to the. Uh, cast partial framework so next coming to the requirements of a clasp assembly all clasp assembly must be designed keeping in mind the retention stability support reciprocation encirclement and passivity coming first to retention retention the quality of the clasp to resist the forces acting to dislodge the components away from the supporting tissue that is in a vertical direction against the gravity is known as retention and how do we uh, uh, ensure that the rpd has a retention that is we engage the clasp in the undercuts the rest should provide vertical support to maintain the clasp terminal in its appropriate place because if the rest is slipping then the retentive terminal of the clasp assembly will not be in the proper position and then this this will result in the uh, dislodgement of the cast partial denture the components must provide sufficient encirclement to prevent the movement of the abutment tooth away from the associated clasp assembly. Next, coming to the support. Support the quality of the clasp assembly that resists the displacement of the processes in an apical direction, that is, towards the supporting tissues or towards the uh, denture based tissues, is known as support. And this primarily the, the support is provided by the rest and the rest seat on the abutment tooth. Next is the stability. The stability is the quality of the clasp assembly to resist displacement of the process in a horizontal direction that is in the horizontal plane and this is achieved by all the framework components that is the major connectors the minor connectors the saddle the denture base they and the reciprocal arm the retentive arm they should all be sufficiently rigid the second thing is the framework should be vert should contact the vertically oriented hard and the soft tissues that is the lateral walls of the residual alveolar ridges and the lateral walls of or the axial walls of the tooth they all provide or offer stability of the cpd frame next is the reciprocation reciprocation is the quality of the class assembly that counters the lateral displacement of the abutment tooth when the retentive class terminal passes over the height of contour so as we know the class assembly has a retentive arm and a reciprocal arm so when the retentive arm passes over the maximum uh, convexity of the tooth and engages the undercut that is when the tooth lateral forces are applied on the tooth to counter this the reciprocal arm which is placed on the opposite side of the tooth that is on the lingual side of the tooth will counter this lateral movement exerted by the retentive arm or the clasp so the reciprocation is achieved by the rigid component that resists the lateral movement which is known as a reciprocal element or the reciprocal arm this may be cast clasp or they may be the lingual plate in case of a mandibular major connector such as Kennedy's bar or the double lingual bar or the lingual plate. They also act as a reciprocal arm in case of a CPD framework. Now coming to encirclement. So here we have the clasp assembly. This is the rest. This is the direct retainer. This is the reciprocal arm in blue. You can note the direct retainer is placed below the maximum convexity or height of contour of the tooth whereas the reciprocal arm is placed at the height of contour of the tooth on the lingual side so the reciprocal arm counteracts the lateral forces exerted by the retentive arm or the retentive terminal on the tooth and this is known as reciprocation next is encirclement encirclement is how much of the clasp assembly encircles the tooth from the tip of the reciprocal arm to the tip of the retentive terminal the greater the encirclement, the greater the support. That is, at the any clasp assembly should offer more than 180 degree of encirclement 
around the abutment too. So in this case, we can see we have a encirclement of at least 270 degrees. So this is uh, a good form of encirclement for a di direct retainer. Next is the passivity. Passivity is the quality of the glass assembly that prevents the transmission of adverse forces to the abutment teeth when the process is completely seated. That is, when the process is seated, the retentive terminal should not engage the tooth or should not engage the undercut and exert lateral forces or tipping forces on the abutment teeth. It should be completely passive. Only when patient chews sticky foods or moves his tongue or performs any function movement when the uh, clasp or the CPD framework is beginning to dislodge, that is when the clasp should become active. So other than that, it should be completely passive. The retentive arm should only be activated when the dislodging forces are applied to the RPT. Now coming to direct retainers, that is the class of assembly, they are broadly categorized into two categories, that is intracoronal, that is within the contour of the tooth and extracoronal, that is which are placed outside the external contour of the tooth. Now intracoronal attachments are basically precision attachments and semi-precision attachments. They are either manufactured, uh, 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 or custom made in the laboratory or they are prefabricated which are sold by different brands such as Rhine 83 which is a famous brand who produces uh, precision attachments and these can be incorporated in the uh, contour of the abutment tooth by placing crowns and then the one part of the precision attachment is then attached to the abutment teeth. Extra cone attachments are the are regular conventional uh, direct uh, retainer or the clasp assemblies which we have uh, spoken about now and depending upon how the uh, retentive arm or the retentive terminal approaches the undercut of the abutment teeth, they are further categorized into two parts, the supra bulge part, uh, supra bulge type of uh, direct retainers and infra bulge type of direct retainers. So let's see what So intracoronal attachments or intracoronal direct retainers as I said are basically precision attachments or semi-precision attachments that are incorporated within the contour of a tooth. So here we can see this is a crown and this has one portion of it which is known as the male portion which is attached to the crown and the female portion the other portion is incorporated into the cast partial framework so you can see over here uh, this is a crown with one portion of the precision attachment attached to it it may be it is also known as tenon or mortis the male part is known as tenon and the female part is known as mortis or it may just be called as a male and female part. So they, these are very precisely fitting parts which are manufactured by machining uh, the titanium alloy or nickel chromium or cobalt chromium alloys and uh, they have a very precise fit and offer excellent stability and good retention. Now in, uh, they consist of like uh, I told two portions, first portion metal receptacle, second portion which is attached to the removed partial denture, a male, a female or tenor or mortis portion and next coming to the extra coronal retainers. Okay, extra coronal retainers are retainers which are placed outside the body of the tooth and they again they are classified as supra bulge or infra bulge class. So basically these are our conventional clasp assemblies which are cast uh, from a wax pattern. So this picture here is wrong. This picture is a picture for a intracoronal retainer that is uh, sorry this is a picture for an attachment. So there are two types. One is the clasp assembly. Second is the attachments. Attachments which are placed outside which are attached to the crown but they are not within the contours of the crown but they are placed outside the crown. And this is the female portion and the male portion is attached to the denture base of the cast partial denture which goes and seats in this receptacle. So these are known as attachments and since they are not within the confines of the abutment teeth but they are outside the abutment teeth, way away outside the abutment teeth, they are called as extra coronal direct retainers. So this is the difference between a supra bulge and infra bulge clasp. A supra bulge clasp or approaches the undercut from a superior direction that is above the height of contour of the tooth and then engages the undercut below the height of contour or height of convexity of the abutment tooth. Whereas an infra bulge retainer such as this shown over here which is a, 
uh, an i bar or y bar which is which are different shapes of a roach class this is basically called as a roach class which approaches the undercut from a gingival direction passing over the undercut crossing the gingival sulcus and then engaging the undercut here in this case it engages two undercuts one on the mesial and one on the distal surface of the labial surface of the tooth so what is the difference between a suprabudge and infrabudge class design suprabudge class design as i mentioned approach undercut occlusally infrabudge approaches the undercut from a pical direction suprabudge require less force for the removal whereas infrabudge class are ex have excellent retention and require more force in suprabudge class the retentive arm is longer in an infrabudge class the retentive class is shorter or there is no retentive arm we just have a mesial rest now second coming to the various types of suprabulge class there are many types of suprabulge class design that have been given over the years by various authors they are also available in all of your textbooks such as stewarts and mccrackens and uh, textbook of prosthodontics by dr padmanabhan and so on so uh, based on this the first and most simple form is known as a c class or a casa compressor class or a simple circuit class second is a reverse circuit circuit clasp then we have multiple circuit circuit clasp we have embrasure clasp we have ring clasp we have uh, only clasp and we have a rod wire circumferential clasp or a combination clasp so next this is a simple cast circumferential clasp it has a shoulder a body a rest a reciprocal arm and a retentive arm this is the most basic clasp assembly design which is used in most of the um, class 3 and class 4 uh, are facing towards each other whereas in embrasure class the retentive class tips are facing away from each other one is pointed mesially another is pointed distally and these are the reciprocal arm which are placed at the height of contour or above the height of contour of the abutment teeth on the opposite side and the class engages the undercut so this is a suprabulge class again and we have joint rests uh, so uh, but these type of class require more interoclusal space it is difficult to seat the cast framework uh, at the time of the framework fit in appointment and we have to provide sufficient clearance from the opposing teeth next is a ring clasp a ring clasp is just like the name suggests it is like a continuous ring that is runs from the minor connector on one side and then continues all the way around the tooth and literally encircles the complete tooth that is it offers around 340 to 350 degree encirclement and uh, uh, there is no separate reciprocal arm the sh the shoulder and the body of the clasp is acts as a reciprocal arm the tip acts as a retentive terminal and this portion uh, second rest which is placed opposite to the first rest acts as a also as a uh, what do you call as a uh, support element that is as a rest stop preventing the sinking of the rpd and the uh, usually this is this class is typically used on severely tilted mandibular third molars or the mandibular second molars when the first or second molar is missing for a long time and the last or the terminal molar has tilted and the undercut lies on the lingual side of the abutment too so that is in only the cases where you would use a ring clasp so you always have to ensure you have two rests one attached to the shoulder and body of the clasp assembly and second which is attached to the opposite side of the tooth surface if you just have one clasp this is very flexible and will uh, put torquing forces on the tooth and may uh, cause dislodgement of the cpd next is the hairpin clasp a hairpin clasp is a simple circuit clasp but the undercut is lying on the same side of the minor connector or the body of the clasp so the simple circuit class then takes a u turn and then comes back to the engage the mesial undercut usually when we have uh, in a, we use this in kennedy's class 3 situations when we have a tilted abutment just distal to the edentulous space so this is how you see we have a simple circuit class that goes back to engage the mesial undercut so this is why it is known as a hairpin because like you have hairpin bends on uh, roads or tracks on hills that's why it's called as a hairpin 
नेक्स्ट इज अफ एंड हाफ क्लास हाफ एंड हाफ क्लास इज अ डिसजॉइंटेड क्लास इन ऑल द अदर क्लास पे सिंपलीज द रिटेंटिव आर्म द एंड द रेसिप्रोकल आर्म आर और अटैच टू द माइनर करेक्टर वन कॉमन माइनर करेक्टर वेर एज हियर वी हैव टू माइनर करेक्टर्स वन इज अटैच टू द रेसिप्रोकल आर्म द अनदर इज अटैच टू द रिटेंटिव आर्म सो वन इज कंप्लीटली डिसजॉइंटेड फ्रॉम द Uh, class assembly on the place on the parallel side or the lingual side or this place on the buccal side from a separate minor connect so this is why it is known as a half and half class half of the class is on the lingual side another half of the class assembly is on the buccal side okay so this provides good bracing action and the uh, uh, lingual arm utilizes the undercut adjacent to the edentulous space for the retention now coming to the back action class back action clasp is like a ring clasp but here the undercut is on the buccal surface and it is not used in a tilted abutment uh, or a tilted molar like in case of a ring clasp so uh, again uh, it has more flexibility because it has a long clasp that originates from one minor character and encircles the tooth all around to the opposite side so it has it becomes more flexible uh, produces more talking for the abutment teeth and is not very retentive next coming to the combination clasp combination clasp is a combination of a wrought wire retentive clasp arm and a cast rest and the reciprocal arm so here uh, when the wax pattern is fabricated for the cpd framework instead of a wax pattern on the retentive arm or the retentive clasp we place a wrought wire clasp which is attached to the wax pattern before the casting and thus it becomes incorporated in the casting or it can be welded later on also Uh, so this is done when the undercut is large uh, and uh, putting a cast clasp arm in in a deep undercut will make the uh, cpd framework very difficult to remove in deep undercuts when we have a wrought wire clasp uh, they are more flexible and therefore they can be easily placed in deep undercuts and they can be easily removed without difficulty by the patient themselves this can also be used when a patient has fractured his retentive clasp or retentive clasp terminal after insertion of the rpd say after a year and two and everything else is good in the cast partial denture and you just want a retentive element on that abutment tooth which has been broken so in that case you can weld a wrought wire clasp so this is the combination of a wrought wire and the cast chrome cobalt alloy that's why it's called as a combination just of a so what is a indirect retainer so we all we now know that direct retainers are nothing but the clasp assemblies and the precision attachments which are placed on the abutment teeth for the retention of the cast partial framework and they are attached by minor connector to the major connector okay or by minor connector to the denture base or the minor connector which attaches to the denture base indirect retainers however are basically in crude form they are just rests which are placed anterior to the fulcrum line so if these are the direct retainers and the and the fulcrum line passes through the direct retainers on the right side to the left side any rest which is placed anterior to the fulcrum line on the teeth which are anterior to the fulcrum line is known as a indirect retainer it may be a simple rest such as a singulum rest an incisal rest or a occlusal rest if it is placed anterior to the fulcrum line at right angle to the fulcrum line it is known as an indirect retainer such as you know here this mesial rest on this tooth acts as a indirect retainer over here this singulum rest on the canine and on the lateral incisor will act as a indirect retainer so now coming to the denture base as you all know denture base uh, framework is also known as a minor connector they may be lattice type we can we discuss this in the in the last lecture on uh, major connectors minor and minor connectors and depending on the design it may be lattice saddle or the uh, bead uh, types okay so next coming to the artificial teeth in come in our removal partial dentures the again the artificial teeth used in removal partial dentures are the same teeth which you used in the rehabilitation of patients using complete removable dentures or complete dentures 
So the artificial teeth in RPD and complete dentures are also known as the tooth component or the occlusal surface or occluding surfaces of the denture. So this is the portion of the denture or dentition which makes contact with the opposing dentition. And uh, there are many types of uh, manufacturers and many types of materials that are being used for the fabrication of denture teeth. And they are available in different molds, they are available in different uh, shades and in different sizes. So one of the type of uh, acrylic teeth or uh, denture teeth is IPN that is interpenetrating polymer network teeth and these are manufactured by Densply and they come in the by the brand name of Biotone IPN. They have greater color stability, they have greater resistance to solubility and they have higher hardness than the conventional polymethyl methacrylate or PMMA acrylic teeth. So because they have two polymer networks entangled within each other, so they have greater resistance to fracture and greater hardness. And uh, this is the typical IPN network. One network is encompassed within the another network. Okay, so these are manufactured by Densply and uh, they are known as IPN and next is the porcelain teeth the use of porcelain teeth has diminished or dwindled over the past two decades a lot because porcelain teeth are very difficult to trim in cases where we have very less uh, occluso gingival interarch space to place the denture teeth because of prior eruption of the opposing teeth or any other reason and also because bonding of the there is no chemical bond or uh, between the denture base and the porcelain teeth we need metal tags or metal pins to retain the porcelain teeth mechanically in the denture base so dislodgement of the porcelain teeth is very common and therefore porcelain teeth use has uh, reduced a lot and now we also have cat cam milled dentures that is uh, 3d printed dentures in which uh, we can select the tooth mold digitally and this these teeth mold are then milled uh, custom milled and then they are attached with a composite resin to the denture base or they can also be ordered from the manufacturer so these are 3d printed or milled or uh, what you call uh, uh, teeth which are ground from a blank of a polymethyl methacrylate blank and these teeth are then milled using a computer designing and computer aided manufacturing machine and then these are then attached to the denture base with a flowable resin or the composite resin. Okay. So that brings us to the end of this lecture of direct and indirect retainers.